here we go on a Tuesday. This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, live in Los Angeles. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on Fox Sports Radio and right here on FS1. My favorite time of the year. Joy Taylor is joining me on a Tuesday. How are you, Joy? I'm doing great. Good morning. Well, we've got the, the four best teams in the NFL, the four best offense in the NFL, the four best coaches in the NFL left. And uh, New England is the one dynasty, but a lot of people feel like it's at the end of its, you know, the last legs of the dynasty. Now, I would argue they have 12 draft picks. Uh, they'll move off Gronk. They'll have cap space. It's not, you know, Brady looked as good as he's ever looked. But they're going to Kansas City this week. And, you know, Kansas City's got the better offense. Kansas City's got the vertical weapons. Kansas City's got the speed. Kansas City's one of the loudest places. Man, New England needs a break in this game. Oh, they just got one. Predicted weather forecast. Under 8 degrees. Possibly 9, 10, 11, below zero. Oh, that's that's going to hurt the better offense. That will aid the better defense. That will hurt the more vertical passing game. That will aid the more consistent, better running game. First of all, Tom Brady is 15-2 and two in the playoffs in what is perceived as inclement weather. He's been here before. 13-2, and two, excuse me. Uh, and by the way, complete 63% of his throws, 30 touchdown passes, 260 yards a game, and what's considered inclement weather in the NFL. Uh, he's the best cold weather quarterback of all time. Dan Marino was great, so was John Elway. Brady's better. And by the way, the Patriots dynasty did begin in a blizzard against Oakland. But they're saying it's going to be an Arctic blast. Well, if I told you there were two teams meeting, and one relied on perimeter passing and speed. Does that sound like it's better in an Arctic blast? If I said this one team's really fast, but something's going to slow them down, would that sound like it's going to help the Chiefs or the Patriots? If I said the weather appears to be the kind of weather, you'll have to run the ball significantly. And here's another one. Outside of the Superdome, and don't kid yourself, noise is an element, just like snow. There's a lot of different elements. There's wind, there's rain, there's snow, there's noise. The Superdome is a big advantage this week for the Saints because it's loud and you can't audible. Arrowhead's considered one of the loudest stadiums in America. College or pro, it'll be nine below. Everybody's going to be wearing a ski mask. People aren't going to be standing and cheering. They're going to be huddled. Wearing wool, trying to stay warm, wearing something over their mouths. Home field advantage via the crowd. Done. Gronk, a liability these days. Actually, the best blocking tight end in football would be great nine below. Travis Kelsey is the best vertical passing threat. Not aided by this weather. Listen, sometimes you need breaks. If I told you it's going to be the coldest game potentially in Arrowhead Stadium history and the coldest game easily this year and in the last two years, and I said there is one team that's got way more experience, runs the ball more effectively, never fumbles, has a short, precise passing game, wins not a factor, and, um, and doesn't really have a vertical passing game to begin with, you would take that team this weekend. Just close your eyes. If I say to you, lousy weather in January, what team do you think of excelling in that? By the way, it should be noted, Dan Marino didn't play well in the cold. Peyton Manning didn't play well in the cold. Just like crowd noise, weather is a huge detriment to teams that sling it, speed teams, vertical teams that rely more on passing than they do running. Um, if weather matters... And if you look at the Saints' history in the playoffs, Sean Payton and Drew Brees are 1-5 and five in the playoffs together on the road. If you think environment matters, and I really do, it's why I believe the Saints are favored over the Rams this weekend. Neutral field, they're not favored. In L.A., they're an underdog. The crowd is an element. So is absolutely brutal weather. 
Tom Brady, Michigan, Foxborough, 20 straight years of lousy weather this time of the year. And by even bad weather standards, this is going to be historic. I believe New England needed a break to win this weekend. They got one from your local meteorologist. They're calling for an Arctic blast. Sounds like something you buy at Dairy Queen. It's an Arctic blast. Edge, New England. It changes the way I see this game. More on that later. So, um, you know, outside of a handful of teams in college and pro, everybody's always looking to fire their coach. Because psychologically, as a fan, it's easy to fire a coach. Fans want to believe they're just a coach away from winning it all. You can't fire players, right? Do you ever notice that? Fans will be overly loyal to average players, but really tough on excellent coaches. Because psychologically, you can talk yourself into, if we just get rid of Mike Tomlin, we'll win all our games. You know, if it's not for Bill O'Brien, we'd be way better than the Colts historically. Can't fire J.J. Watt and Jadavian Clowney, multiple players. So fans always want the coach out. Much it, The coach is often very good, more than like average players, troubled players. You'll be loyal to him. So uh, Jerry Jones was talking about his coach, Jason Garrett, who's the most criticized, successful coach in the NFL. And here's what Jerry Jones said. If Jason had been out on the market two weeks ago, uh, he would have had five offers for head coaching. I know that. So you've got to look at what your alternative is. I believe there's 32 teams in the NFL, and I think 25% of them have an elite coach, eight. There are eight coaches to me that feel better. Belichick, Andy Reid, Sean Payton, Sean McVay. I think what Matt Nagy did in Chicago this year with limited offensive personnel and Trubisky was remarkable. Pete Carroll, Doug Peterson, and John Harbaugh. John Harbaugh lost a quarterback, took a rookie quarterback who's not really good at throwing the football, and they won their division. That is great coaching, and he'd previously gotten to a Super Bowl. I think there are eight coaches that fan bases mostly know eh, they're pretty good. After that, you do realize that Jason Garrett falls in the class of the other guys who we all like way more than we love. Mike Tomlin. Gets heat in Pittsburgh, but you like him. Bill O'Brien in Houston. Dan Quinn's been to a Super Bowl in Atlanta. Ron Rivera in Carolina. Jason Garrett. Mike Zimmer in Minnesota. They're clearly competent, all of them. They've won divisions. Players generally play hard for them. And uh, they win a lot of games. In fact, I can argue with all of them something really impressive. Do you know Bill O'Brien has won three division titles? One year with Tom Savage and Brock Osweiler. That's impressive. Mike Tomlin has been to two Super Bowls and won one. Jason Garrett, he's been in Dallas forever. He's had one losing season. What about Dan Quinn, Ron Rivera? They got to a Super Bowl. My point is, a quarter of this league, or eight coaches, most fan bases get on every Sunday, you've got the better coach. Jason Garrett simply falls into a group of a bunch of guys who on a resume I can certainly promote, market, and defend. But we mostly like them more than we love them. And he falls into that Bill O'Brien, Mike Tomlin, Ron Rivera, Dan Quinn, Jason Garrett. Clearly competent. Nobody better currently on the market. Have won multiple division titles. Rarely is the team not playing hard or man overboard. We can run Jason Garrett out of town, and I do not consider him in the Elite Eight Club. Look around the league at who is getting hired. Before you blast on Mike Tomlin and Ron Rivera and Dan Quinn and Jason Garrett and Bill O'Brien and your Mike Zimmers, look at who the Packers hired. Look at who Arizona hired. Look around the league. Look at who Cleveland hired. Take a deep breath. Matt Mosley covers the Cowboys, talked about Garrett yesterday and how many feel in Dallas. I think something has to change. I think Jerry knows that. 
this Jason Garrett thing, he, he was ready to fire him. I mean, he, he, at three and five, he was getting ready and saying, not during the season, but he was ready and he was lining up. And who knows, Lincoln Riley, Matt Rule, the great Baylor coach, who knows who he was talking to. But he always has a note card of about three or four coaches ready. Jerry keeps that. He doesn't ever use it, it doesn't seem like. Used to use it a lot. The point is, though, Jerry, younger Jerry, was much more willing to ride. 